Okay. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Thanks to DevDaz for borrowing his machine. I didn't bring a computer. Um, well, I didn't bring a computer from a vendor that believes in ports. Um, so, you know, that's life sometimes. So kicking off, I've only got 15 minutes, so I'm going to be really quite quick. There's a lot of material to cover, um, and I'm happy to take further questions afterwards. And my slides will be online, so don't worry about trying to write down URLs. So I've done a fair bit of Puppet. I'm currently looking after about 200 servers, so not that many on Amazon um, that all utilize Puppet for provisioning uh, and configuration. And my previous role, I did the same thing for Fairfax, where we had quite a lot more than 200 servers um, for environments like smh.com.au. Uh, and generally speaking, I'm a big fan of Puppet, big fan of DevOps tools and techniques, and of course, public cloud. Um, and I blog about all kinds of terrible stuff on my website. Um, so why does configuration, ma configuration management even matter in the first case? Like, what's the whole point of using this stuff? And ultimately, for me at least, it's a case of quick, reliable, and repeatable provisioning of infrastructure. Um, and that also unlocks the ability to do automated provisioning, uh, not just from uh, ease of use as an admin, but also from things like auto-scaling and other possibilities in cloud environments. And because you're building systems from a known state or source of information, you've got consistency, and that also brings, in turn brings audibility to your environment. Uh, but you know, your motives may vary. It may even just be as simple as you don't like having to define thousands of Apache vHosts by hand, and you'd like to use some templating. You can use it on a small scale or a big scale. So, well, Jeffro, I've got Kubernetes now. Why do I care about your configuration management filth? Um, that's 90s technology. Um, and you know, there's a little bit of truth in that statement in that certainly the emerging technologies we're seeing, uh, you know, things like container Linux and stuff, where you don't have a traditional host operating system to manage, does greatly diminish the use of technology in certain use cases. Uh, but it's not to say it's entirely pointless just yet, because you may have a host operating system that requires a configuration management system um, to, to be deployed. So we, for example, use Amazon Linux um, with ECS on top of it. And Amazon Linux is just like any traditional Linux environment, still needs a fair bit of configuration and love. Um, or you might have environments that you can't yet containerize. And that might not be a technical problem, it might be a procedural problem, or even a licensing and support problem. Um, so there's certainly cases where you might not be running a fully containerized, wonderful environment just yet. So OK, if you've got my interest, you know, you're really excited about configuration management now. Um, so if you don't know what Puppet looks like, it looks a bit like this. It's basically a DSL that says, uh, make sure MySQL runs, install PHP, and then drop on a file. Uh, that's pretty much how Puppet looks throughout, depending on different resource types. Uh, you can obviously do things that are much, much more complex in that example. Uh, but that's the general gist of it. From the infrastructure point of view, every server runs a Puppet agent. And these agents connect into a Puppet master to periodically download the configuration. Now, this isn't so much downloading a script and executing it. It's much more about checking the current intended state of configuration, checking what config's on the server, and bringing the server in line with the intention. Um, and by default, that takes place every 30 minutes. So servers are checking in, pulling down config, and doing their thing. OK, so yeah, it's not very interesting, sorry. But it explains what Puppet is on a certain basic level. So it's from actually interesting stuff. Well, most of us tend to run more than a single kind of server. You know, we have a web server, a database server, maybe 20 different types of web servers. And it's also pretty important that you know, if a web server can't pretend to be the database server and grab all of its configuration, like MySQL root passwords. And Puppet, of course, has a model for this, which is a certificate signing model, where your agent servers are signed against the master, and they can only grab the stuff that they've been configured to grab. So DB1 is signed and says, I am definitely DB1, here's my cert, uh, and not, in fact, dub the dub one, or vice versa. And in the good old days, this worked beautifully because we all racked and stacked boxes, and registering to the Puppet Master wasn't very hard. I mean, you'd jump on the Puppet Master, jump on the Puppet Agent, run a command on each, and job done. I mean, that was nothing compared to toiling for hours in a server room for freezing cold uh, vent in your face and cutting yourself on bits of metal. Um, it, it, was, it was a breeze, really. But it's not really cloud scale to have to log onto a bunch of systems and do the signing process yourself, which, you know, given that you know, we're all big, hopefully big fans of the cloud. Uh, we want to do things using automation and auto-scaling and provision thousands of servers a day, if need be. So we started doing Puppet environments that need to be cloud scale, and we started using things like auto-signing. So this is quite common in any Puppet environment I've seen in Amazon, where instead of having an admin sign it, we rely on when the server comes online, registering with the master, getting the certificate signed, and automatically just grabbing some config. Um, and typically, people also tend to drop host names at that point and start using roles. Um, for example, we don't say, this is host one, host two, host three. We just say, this is web server cat picks. And it gets the configuration that relies on that. 
Um, and the cool thing about that is you can put the role outside of the OS image into things like EC2 tags or user data to provision it at startup time. Uh, so the process looks a bit like this. A server will boot a generic Linux OS image, so it could be the stock standard Ubuntu image, for example. Um, it goes, hey, what's in my user data? Oh, my user data says I should be a web server, and I should talk to a puppet master over here, talks to the puppet master, puppet master signs a certificate, gives it the configuration, and the server goes on to serve a great many number of cat picks successfully. Everyone's happy. Except there is a slight problem with this model, which is the alternative workflow is that your server gets owned by an attacker, and the attacker executes a puppet sign request with an alternative role, such as database server or very secret uh, social security number server, and Puppet, because AutoSign's enabled, happily signs that certificate and gives it the configuration for that super secret server. And the attacker now has all the configuration that server has, such as maybe DB passwords. And of course, the attacker goes on to own all of the things, which is really, really not good. Um, now, the good news is there is a solution. Oh, yeah, it gets slightly worse too, because it will happily run as a non privileged user. So you don't need to exploit root, you just need to exploit www data, run Puppet to the Puppet server, create a new certificate, and then download some config, which is not very good. Um, so yeah, auto signing, really, really dangerous if you get it wrong. The good news is there are ways of doing it properly. So a key thing, or most fundamental part, is you have to authenticate that the server is legitimately asking for the role it is supposed to have. Is it actually a web server? And is it actually web server cat picks, not some other kind of server? Um, Puppet offers a whole bunch of models for this, and I've kind of got a little bit of a complaint here of Puppet, which is they kind of give you a whole bunch of ways to hang yourself um, instead of just going, you know what, we're not going to offer a leave, we're just going to offer you a secure model. Um, the link on the below, if you're ever doing anything with Puppet, read that page, read everything on it, but I'll sum it up as don't use anything but the policy auto-signer. And what that is, is a model where Puppet will execute a program you provide it, give it the details it's received from the agent, and then you are responsible for deciding whether or not you accept that certificate signing request. Um, so there's a few fundamentals to that. So the biggest problem is your first initial thought will be, well, I'll just put a password in the user data, and then when the server comes online, it will send the I'm a web server password to the auto signer, it'll be trusted, and away we go. The problem is almost all the sources you have for giving the server that information are readable by any user on the server, such as the user data, um, which is available for curl request or the tags, which if you're using IAM roles, which you should be, um, is actually readable by all users on the box, which is obviously bad. Um, so you have to design a process for auto signing which can't be repeated, such as single use tokens or some out of band validation uh, at the cloud provider's API levels. Um, it's actually a really, really complicated topic. Um, so you have to think really, really carefully about this. And I know there's a lot of puppet environments out there where people haven't done this and are just relying on a shared cert across all servers, which means any server can grab any configuration, or just not even doing this at all, and just relying on automatic signing. Um, so yeah, really, really nasty, nasty trap. And it'd be great if there's a great reference implementation for this, but there isn't. There's nothing on the docs from Puppet that say, hey, you should use this reference implementation for Amazon, or this reference implementation for Azure. There's just nothing out there. Um, we wrote one for our environment, and we rely on the trusted worthiness of the Amazon APIs for us. So we rely that servers can't set their own tags and other information like that. Uh, but there's other approaches out there. I've linked to one which another guy wrote around doing just-in-time web tokens. I've even seen implementations written in Bash. Um, so, you know, depending on what you like, there's uh, definitely something out there for everyone. Um, there's another big hurdle too, which is Facts can't be trusted on Puppet. So a fact is like an attribute about server. You go, oh, I'm this size, or I've got this much RAM, or this operating system installed. Uh, but they're not trusted because they can be changed at any time. Um, so if you happen to do something scary like this, you say, hey, if the role is based on the fact role, include this configuration. So let's say it was role web server, if defined web server, include web server. But the server is actually some other kind of server. It's now gained access to the configuration, even if it's got a legitimately signed certificate. So there's a great thing called trusted facts, which you have to know about to avoid burning yourself, uh, but it actually aren't too hard to use. And the whole model behind this is you choose specific facts that you care about, bake them into the certificate process as like attributes on, this, on the certificate, and then those can't be changed retrospectively once the signing process has been completed. So if it says, I'm a web server in the cert, it's only ever going to be a web server in that certificate. All right, so yeah, it's, okay, it's kind of interesting. Um, I know there's a lot there. Um, but yeah, definitely some interesting ways of breaking, breaking everything. Um, I just want to talk a little bit more about a couple other things um, if you're doing Puppet on a large scale. So you definitely want to be using a CI-CD process. I mean, we'd expect the case from any developer to have you know, a reliable, repeatable process to release to production. Um, we should certainly do the same for our own infrastructure. Um, and again, there's lots of different ways of doing this. There's a really popular design paradigm called 
um, RTNK. So you have a tool called RTNK, you have a Git repo, um, and you have a whole model for checking out those changes and applying them to your servers. Um, We've got a reference implementation that we built. Um, it's called Carnival RTNK Webhook, and it basically uses SNS, SQS to distribute your config across multiple puppet masters, because ideally you can you know, have more than one server. Uh, but there's other ways of doing this, and it could even just be as simple as the NFS volume, and you've got your Git repo just hosted directly on the servers, depending on what your preferred architecture happens to be. Um, HA is important, so you don't want to have a single point of failure in your configuration management system, because that one day you lose an AZ, you can go to the other AZ, you can try and launch new systems, and you're going to realise, actually, I can't provision anything, and your day got a lot worse. Um, now, hopefully everyone else is down anyway, because Amazon's got a fault, but you know, if someone realises you didn't, didn't fix this, it's going to be a little bit embarrassing. Good news is, it's actually not very hard. You pretty much just need N plus one puppet masters. The only catch is you have to make sure a few things are shared. So, for example, all the configuration needs to be available to all of the puppet masters and also synced at the same time. You don't want one server running config from 24 hours ago and one server running config from five minutes ago. You want them all to have the latest configuration. And you want it, and when you push new configuration, they all get it within, say, 60 seconds or so. Um, you also need to make sure the certificates are signed and distributed across all the puppet masters, because again, if one server doesn't know about an existing signing request, it's not going to be able to actually authenticate and download configuration. Um, the other thing I think a lot of people do wrong is you've got to bake your servers even if you're still using Puppet. So a common design I've seen is a server comes online, Puppet runs for the very first time, builds all the SOE, builds the web server stuff, server's now online. But if you're auto-scaling, that takes quite a while, maybe five, 10 minutes. And the other problem is if Puppet breaks, your auto-scaling process is broken and you can't launch new systems. So even with all this tooling in place, you should still be doing baking of images and having pre-built images that you can launch. Um, there is a thing called masterless Puppet. If you're doing Puppet and you're like, oh, masters are so much work, I've got to look after a whole other server. Um, it doesn't make things easier. It just brings a whole bunch of new challenges. Uh, but there are some legitimate reasons for using it in really, really large environments. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of work around this. It's basically me being a cheapskate and not wanting to pay for one more DigitalOcean box in my personal environment. So I used a masterless model. Um, but actually, it's so much work, I wouldn't really recommend it. But if you know, painful things and being cheap is your uh, particular uh, hobby, um, feel free to check out some of those URLs. Um, so I'm pretty much out of time, but a couple takeaways. I know it's a really, really big topic. It's compressed into a really small space. Um, more than happy to have a chat afterwards about to people about how this stuff works. But probably the number one thing for me is if you're doing Puppet and you're doing automation, or doing automated signing, you've got to look at what your auto-signing process is. And you've got to really look at it from a malicious attacker point of view. How are they going to mess it up? How are they going to exploit your systems? You know, if you've got good infosec people, bring them in the process and get and talk talk to them about your your environment and see how they can if, if they can spot any deficiencies with that. Um, the other thing I'll just point out is you know definitely make sure your puppet stuff's fully um, CICD'd. You know, ideally you should do some tests as well, um, and make, make sure you do the work to make things um, highly available as well. It's it's easy to go, oh, we'll sort it out later, or the config server is not that important as a production system, but you don't want one more thing holding you back from recovering systems in, in production. Um, so yeah, thanks, and thanks to my employer for sending me over. Um, I'm more than happy to take questions later on, uh, particularly if you're doing lots of puppet stuff. Um, so maybe after, or during the break, because we're probably out of time. Oh, we've got some time? Not really. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate that. And thanks to this for your machine as well.